Creeps. Mystery Playhouse invites you to visit the Mystery Theater. The play, Corpus Delecti. <laughs> Sorry, the warden says that's the best he can do, even for you, Lieutenant Connors. All right. I'll be back. You can call me if you want to leave before then. Jim. Jim. Jim, for the love of God. I... I... You've got to tell me. You can tell me. There's, there's nothing to tell. You can tell your own brother. Don't you see? This is my business, Jim. I'm not a police detective for nothing. I could help. But it's too late, Mike. In two days, it'll be all over. They say they give you a shot of something before they take you to the chair. They say you... Hardly even know what's going on. But you didn't do it. I know you didn't. You're taking a rap for that cheap lying Stop attorney. it, Mike. Oh, all right. Sorry. You can't talk about her like that, Mike. If you... If you knew how sweet she is. Jim, I know you didn't kill her husband. I don't know what happened, but I know you didn't do it. Why don't you tell me, Jim? What can I say to Mother? I've got to tell her something. She's waiting at home now. If, if I tell you, will you promise me something? Anything, Jim. Promise me you won't tell anybody but Mother, and, and not even her until I'm... until after the day after tomorrow. I promise. Jim, what happened that night? I love Mary more than anything in this world. She loves me. You, you knew her husband, Martin Stevens, a wealthy Wall Street broker. Well, she told me she'd asked him for a divorce, but he wouldn't give it to her. She was terribly unhappy. Then this night she called, and, well, I'd never heard a sound that way before. Jim, come to me quickly, darling. Mary, what's the matter? They can't tell you over the phone. Just come, Jim. All right, I'll be right over. I rushed out and put the cab. I couldn't imagine what had happened. When I got there, Mary met me at the door. She was trembling. She led me to the living room. Jim. It's Martin. He's... Jim. Look. Martin, her husband, was lying on the floor. His head was all bloody. There was a heavy candelabra nearby with blood on it. He was dead. <laughs> I didn't mean to kill him, Jim. We quarreled again. And he said such terrible things about you and me. He kept screaming names at me. Then he started to beat me. And... Oh, Mary, my Mary, you, your face, it's all bruised. He kept hitting me. Then I, I grabbed the candelabra. I told him to stay away. But he kept coming toward me. Jim, I didn't want to do it. Oh, Mary, honey, you, you, you've, you've only done what everyone has a right to do. It, it was self-defense. But everyone will say I did it because of us. They'll put me in prison. Oh, no, I won't let them. We'll, we'll run away. That would only make it worse. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. But we'll have to do something. Jim. Yeah? Jim, if there weren't any body... What do you mean? If there's no... Corpus delicti. They can't find anybody guilty. Can they? That's it. They won't even be sure there's been a murder. Well, that's it. We've got to get rid of Martin's body. We 
had to get Martin's body out of the house, so we went up to the attic, got a cedar chest, carried it downstairs together. Then we forced Martin's body into it and locked the chest. I was in an awful daze, but luckily Mary seemed able to keep her head. I'll help you get the trunk in the car, Jim. Then you drive right out to our summer place on Long Island. There isn't a soul there, I know. All right. Don't turn on any lights there. We'll put the trunk in the boat and... <gasps> what do we do? I, I don't know. I can't imagine who might... Maybe they'll go away. Jim, it must be my dressmaker. She was supposed to stop by this evening for a fitting. If she knows I'm here... Yeah. All right, I'll... I'll get rid of her. Shut the doors to the living room before you open the front door, Jim. Right. Yes? Is Mrs. Stevens home, please? She expects me for a fitting. Uh, I'm sorry, she isn't home. But Mrs. Stevens told me particularly to come just now at this hour. Well, she went out earlier, uh, unexpectedly. She'll call you when to come again. Well... Uh... Thank you. Good night. Good night. I got rid of her all right, Mary. I, I said you'd call her. Good, Jim. You better get moving now. No. Mary, I'll go alone. You'd better establish an alibi. What do you mean, darling? Well, why don't you go to a movie and ask the usher or the ticket seller something, anything, but talk with somebody a minute so, so they'll remember you. But Jim! Just in case, Mary. I, I want you to. All right, darling. If you say so. Everything worked like clockwork. Mary went to the movies, and I drove out to their Long Island place. The place was deserted. I drove to the boathouse, got the cedar chest into the boat, and then, when I was offshore about half a mile, I pushed the cedar chest overboard. Then I returned to the boathouse, started to drive back to town. About halfway home, I was stopped by a motorcycle policeman. This your car? I, uh, uh no, uh, it belongs to a friend. And how come we got a call to pick up this car? been reported stolen. Well, it's my duty to warn you that anything you say may be used against you, Mr. Connors. But I tell you, I'm a friend of the family, Inspector. There's, there's nothing extraordinary in my... Using their car? I I've done so many times. Well, all I know is that the chauffeur returned here, found the car gone, and reported it stolen. The chauffeur? But I'm sure when Mrs. Stevens returns, she can explain. Very well. Perhaps you can explain those blood stains on the rug in that next room. Uh, I don't know. We found I... fingerprints on the candelabra columns. I'm arresting you on suspicion. We have every reason to believe Martin Stevens has been murdered. <laughs> You know the rest, Mike. They were my fingerprints on the candelabra. I picked it up when I first got there. So you confessed to shield that double-dealing, no-good woman. Didn't even defend yourself in court. Now she's letting you take the rap for her. But it wouldn't do any good to drag her into it, Mike. I'd go to the chair in any case. And remember, Mike, I'll deny everything I told you. Remember that? I know. Why, oh, Jim, how could you fall for that corpus delicti stuff? Jim, don't you know what corpus delicti means? Don't you know it has nothing to do with the body of the victim? It means body of the evidence. You can't be convicted unless the body of the evidence is against you. And it was all right, even to the dressmaker saying I was the only person there that night. Oh, nobody would believe the truth now. Perhaps they would, if we had the truth. What? But I told you the truth. All of it? I'm going to get to the root of all of this, Jim. But why didn't you tell me sooner? Don't you see? You've only left me 48 hours. 48 hours. So 
that's the story, Mrs. Stevens. Jim has told me everything. Now, what are you going to do about it? I don't know what Jim told you. All I know is that I spent the evening at the movies. When I came home, the police were there with Jim. Look, there's only one person who stands to profit from your husband's death, and that's you. I happen to know a little bit about your husband's financial affairs. I know he was positively bankrupt. And I know his one asset was a $100,000 insurance policy. My husband left me well provided for years. And just what does that prove? Prove? Nothing, I guess. By the way, where's that chauffeur of yours, the one who reported the car stolen? He's no longer with me. He gave notice and left. Where did he go? Didn't he leave a forwarding address? No, he didn't. Hmm. Just disappeared, huh? I see. Well, I'll be going. Oh, uh, just a minute. I've got some letters of Jim's upstairs. I found them while I was going through my things and packing. I'll return them to you. Packing? You're leaving town? Yes, I, I'm going to my father's in Chicago. Shall I get the letters? Go ahead. In 38 hours. Jim. Jim, 38 hours. Hello. This is International Airways. Is Mrs. Stevens there? Just a moment, up. Uh, could I take the message, please? Oh, uh, certainly. On her reservation to Monterey, Mexico, we have a seat for her on the 6.30 flight tomorrow morning. Monterey? Monterey? You must be mistaken. You mean Chicago. Oh, no, sir. There's no mistake. Monterey, Mexico. Okay, I'll have her confirm it. Thank you. Monterey. Hmm. Why did she lie? Was that the phone? I thought I heard something. Uh, something about a reservation. I said you'd call back. Oh, I guess it was my reservation to Chicago. Well, Mike, here are the letters. You see, I didn't like to return them to Jim under the circumstances. That shows a great sense of delicacy, Mary. Goodbye, Mike. I dare say we won't be meeting again. I dare say... Still, you can't tell. It's a small world. Hello, Mother. This is Mike, Mother. Listen, I'm flying to Monterey this evening. I haven't time to see you. I must take the early flight. I want to get there ahead of someone else. Yes, it's about Jim. I don't know why I'm going or what I'll find. I'm just playing a hunch because there's nothing else to do. Okay, Mother. And Mother, say a little prayer, will you? Only 31 hours more, Jim. 31 hours more. Maybe this is a wild goose chase anyway. It's only a false lead. Maybe... Oh, Jim, only 31 hours more. Now, look here. Are you sure oh, that... Oh, si, senor. Yes, it is so. I have explained to the senor before. The second flight from New York has just arrived. And I tell you, I... All right, thanks. Ah, now I have guessed. The senor is waiting for the lady, no? A lady who is arrived for the next plane. Oh, no wonder the senor is impatient. Ah, see, I was young once myself, you know. Ah, look, look, senor. There comes a lady now. She appears to be going to the taxi cabs. Is that the lady? Yes. <laughs> yes, that's the lady. Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Cab. Hey there, cabby. Follow that cab ahead. Follow that cab and don't lose it. Sí, I'll make it worth your while, driver. 20 pesos, 20. Sí, Four hours more. I'm too late. Even if she leads me where I want to go, it'll be too late. 
There's a chance still, just a slim chance. So, Jim, Jim, you didn't do it. If only she leads me to the guy who did, Jim. Jim. Driver, what's the matter? Driver, what is this? Can't we get through this crowd? Oh, the senor is fortunate. Tonight is fiesta. Only tonight can you see such a fiesta as this. But I told you I... Here, driver, I'll get out. You have to find that other cab. Momento, senor. I know where the other cab goes. You do where? The driver is Jose. He goes to Hotel El Siente. Good. How soon can you get me there? Oh, maybe an hour, maybe two. When the fiesta is over, quien sabe. An hour or two? I can't wait. I'll walk. But, senor, such a fiesta only comes once a year. Senor is all alone and in such a... Oh, no, thanks. Excuse me. Excuse me, please. Let me through, please. I'm sorry. Hey, you, look, which way is the Hotel Fiante? Uh, I mean... Santa Star El Hotel Del Excuse me. Is this the Hotel Fiancé? Si, sí, senor. What time is it? Oh, son las diez y media. I mean, it's uh, ten thirty, senor. The, the American lady who came in less than an hour ago... What room did she go to? Oh, no American ladies registered here, senor. She came in here. She must have. Oh, can sabe. Here, this is for you. Oh, gracias, senor. Gracias. She... Look, she is my wife. I I think she deceives me. You understand? Oh, uh, but of course, senor. Senor, listen, listen. Room 402. There is a man there. A man there? Now we're getting somewhere. My... I'm coming in, Mary. No, don't try that. This gun is loaded, and I don't mind using it. What do you want? There's someone I expect to meet here. The man who really murdered... What's the meaning of this, sir? Holy mother. The corpus delicti. Mr. Martin Stevens. Martin? Jim's brother. He's a detective. Detective? Now, look here. Shut up and sit down, both of you. It's almost 11 o'clock. In exactly one hour, my brother Jim is going to die for the murder of a guy I'm looking at this minute. You have no right... I'm doing the talking, Stevens. You can thank your lucky stars I found you in time, because to help me, I... The phone. What's the phone? Operator. Operator. Si, senor. Get me Albany, New York. The governor's mansion. Quick. It's a matter of life and death. Si, senor. Dallas, Texas. Please, operator. But it isn't in an hour. In New York, it's exactly one hour later. It's eight minutes to 11 Monterey time, but... New York time, it's eight minutes to 12. He's going to die in eight minutes. Operator, please hurry. He's going to die. Don't you understand? He's going to die. Dallas, Texas. Please put this call through to Albany, New York. Albany, New York, very well. Hello, Chicago. Operator, please hurry, please. Sit quiet, you two. And if you know how to pray, you'd better begin. You better pray this call gets through. If it doesn't, you're not going to leave this room alive, either of you. Chicago. This is Dallas, Texas. New York, please. Hurry, operator. Please hurry. Sorry, all the circuits to New York are busy. There will be a delay of about 20 minutes. 20 minutes? But there isn't 20 minutes. Operator, he's going to die. Just a minute, sir. Chicago, see if you can get me Buffalo. Give me Buffalo, New York. You thought you could get away with this, but you won't. That phony murder. Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, give me Albany, please. Sorry, I have no free circuit to Albany. I'll try Rochester. Please hurry, operator. Hurry, please hurry. Oh, Jim. Rochester, New York. Give me Albany, quick. Albany, New York. Albany? The governor's mansion, and please hurry. I'll ring it, sir. Just a moment. Uh, 
Answer, you fools. Answer. Don't you realize Jim's going to die? Answer. Executive Mansion. Let me speak to the governor. The governor is retired. This is the governor's secretary speaking. Well, listen very carefully. A man's life depends on it. This is Lieutenant Mike Connors of the New York Police Force calling from Monterey, Mexico. In less than five minutes, my brother Jim Connors is going to die in the chair at Sing Sing for the murder of a man who was sitting here in this room alive. Now tell the governor to call the warden at once with a reprieve. But how can I be sure this isn't just... For heaven's sake, man, investigate later. You can check on me at headquarters in New York. Only stop the execution if only for an hour while you do investigate. Don't you understand? There isn't time for anything now. Wake the governor. Don't you understand? An innocent man is going to die. Believe me. Believe me. I... I'll do what I can. I'll call you back. I'll stand by for the call, sir, and ring you at once, sir. Thank you. I don't think he believed me. He didn't believe me. You'll find out, only it'll be too late. So another execution is going to take place tonight. Right here. For murder. No, you, you don't dare do anything like Shut that. Shut up. I know now just what you did. You, Stevens, lie down. You smear yourself in the candelabra with some of your own blood so it looks all right even in the chemical analysis. You, Mary, send for Jim and dump Stevens' living body in the cedar chest. Then when Jim answers the door, Stevens steps out and tosses in some weights. Oh, it's simple, I tell you. It's almost midnight. It's almost time. Almost time. Mike, please, Shut Mike. Up. Then Stevens beats it for Mexico. You collect the insurance and come here to meet him. You remembered everything. You had the dressmaker come to find Jim there and told the chauffeur to take the car so he'd find it gone. You... Well, to pull the switch soon. Only a few seconds more now. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Midnight. Jim's dead. You killed him, you two. I promised you you'd never live. No, Mike. You no. killed him. Now it's your turn to die. No. Give me that gun. Brother, this I love. Oh. And now it's for you, Mrs. Martin. No, please don't kill me, Mike. Don't. I'm executing you for murder. No, Mike. Now. No, no. Hello? 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 Hello, Mike. It's me. I'm in the warden's office. Hello, Mike. Jim. Jim. It's Jim. Jim, I... Ah, uh, Jim! <laughs> Last closing time on the Mystery Playhouse, so good night. Sleep tight.